Hello, I'm Mr. Canoehead, Canada's greatest aluminum-headed crime fighter. Paul has asked me to review the final episode of She-Hulk because after he finished watching it, he had a nervous breakdown and I have spirited him away to my secret cabin of solitude in Algonquin Park, which, come to think of it, by telling you that it's in Algonquin Park makes it that much less secret. But it's a big place. Because most of you Americans do not know who Mr. Canoehead is, I thought it might be a good idea to tell you a bit about myself. I was a mild-mannered insurance adjuster who, while portaging through Algonquin Park, was hit by a bolt of lightning and had this aluminum canoe welded to my head. After several weeks of recovery in our universal health care system, which didn't cost me anything, I discovered that my lightning-enhanced canoe was impervious to bullets and root vegetables. I can also dig very fast into the earth like a backhoe because of my strong neck I developed through Pilates. I can also fly by spinning really fast I just have to make sure I don't eat anything beforehand. The parabolic shape of my canoe gives me super hearing and lets me understand woodland creatures. I fight crime here in Canada by clooning miscreants in the head while yelling my famous catchphrase, Taste Gunnels. My nemesis is the evil Ultramind, who had a Radio Shack TSR-80 computer welded to his head and with his 16K of RAM has been plotting to take over the world. Perhaps I should introduce him to Doomcock. I think they have many things in common. So now that you know who I am, I believe this will be the very first review of a superhero TV show by a certified superhero. And it's about time to. This was the big finale to the very controversial She-Hulk TV series. First of all, I just want to say that I'm a huge fan of She-Hulk. I think she is very attractive. Of course, being alone in my cabin of solitude, I had to resort to the J-Stroke. I was so excited about the She-Hulk getting her own TV series uh, because I know her well. She has defended me several years ago when I was charged with cross-border crime fighting without a license when I had to chase down the evil Dr. Poutine into upstate New York from Quebec. Your customs officers are not very nice and rely excessively on cavity searches. I thought one would have been sufficient. Anyway, I asked She-Hulk about the change to the TV show made to her origin story. She said that's the way show business worked. Before I get to the finale, I have to say overall I was disappointed with the series. Jennifer is a super smart lawyer, and in the show they hardly showed any legal conflicts, and they actually made her look quite incompetent. This I did not think was fair to the TV audience. She also didn't get to fight any really good bad guys. I was very disappointed about that. A show called She-Hulk, I would have expected a good Hulk smash in each show. I'm a superhero with simple pleasures, stuck in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. I still have all the Rockford Files on beta. The final episode started with a parody of one of my favorite TV shows of all time, the Bill Bixby version of The Hulk. The actress they got to play, She-Hulk, was very good, actually. This was all a silly dream sequence, of course, and we find Jennifer incarcerated in that supervillain holding cell that made me very sad because she was clearly innocent and being railroaded. People are happy to reap our evil fighting benefits, but so quick to condemn us when we're in a spot of trouble. I didn't like it that her legal cohorts were not willing to fight for justice. She agrees to not be She-Hulk and wears a negation ankle bracelet. I thought that was patently unfair. She loses her job and has to move back in with her family. I do not like her mother at all. Then Jennifer and her assistant Nikki, who bears a striking resemblance to Fran Drescher, try to figure out who is behind the hacker conspiracy. I don't think they are qualified for this kind of IT work. They should have used my friend, Cyber Gopher. They give up, and Jennifer decides to go to Abomination's retreat to rest and get away, to ask Emil Blonsky's advice. In the meantime, Nikki infiltrates the hacker cult, a bit too easily, I thought, but 
this is television after all and not real superhero life, convinces Pug, a worthless lawyer in my opinion, and both go to the intelligentsia secret meeting which did not seem very secret to me at all. Pug infiltrates but needs Nikki to tell him what to do because he's a man. He has great difficulty saying anything about women that could be construed as toxic masculinity because it embarrasses him to pretend that he is part of the group and not the pussy-whipped individual he actually is. I can tell you that Mr. Canoehead is not afraid of opening doors for women, but to be honest, prefers that they open doors for me because I can't reach the door handles easily. Jennifer goes to the secret meeting that just conveniently happens to be in the same property as Emile's. Honestly, I thought that was beyond incredulity. Todd, who is obviously playing Elon Musk, is the leader of Intelligentsia, which really is a childish I hate women club. Emil Blonsky shows up as Abomination, as an inspirational guest speaker, then Jennifer shows up, she sees Pug, then Nikki shows up, and they accuse Todd of being the evil mastermind whereby he admits to all his crimes. I wish real superhero life was so easy. He injects himself with the blood he stole from Jen, turns into a monster, the Hulk and Titania arrive, and then the show stops as She-Hulk storms the writer's room to ask, what the fuck is going on? Why the lame ending? She is told it's all Kevin's doing, referring to Kevin Feige, El Supremo of Marvel. She goes to a secret lair and it turns out Kevin is actually a robot churning out formulaic Marvel content, which should be of no surprise to anyone. As Jennifer, she insists on changes. Kevin agrees. We return to the show, to Jennifer's version. Todd's arrested. She-Hulk is cleared. Blonsky has to go back to jail for going all abomination, even though he was totally supportive and even saved Jen during the brief melee. I'm all for putting bad guys behind bars, but I didn't think that was fair. Daredevil shows up, and they end up at a family picnic embarrassing Matt Murdock, which I also found very unsatisfying. Was this supposed to be they, them, Hulk? All I can say is, this ending was not very believable. I wished I could break the fourth wall of life and change things in the middle of a large fight to the death, like when I had to take on the mad truckers of Ottawa, which were a bunch of lunatics. Regarding the show, I'm left unsatisfied. It's clear that the cliché tropes laid out in the previous episodes were created for the sole purpose of blowing up those tropes in the end, so they had nothing to do with anything. So while I did groan during the series, seeing all that standard evil stuff, I was still hoping to see some closure. But with this meta-subversion, I got no closure, and the ending was just a cheat. It meant the entire series was meaningless, and a complete waste of time. I think that is just too heavy for me to process at this point. I wished I had 16K of RAM like Ultramind to sort this out. I think I'll take a walk and talk with my woodland friends. So long, everyone, and Doomcock. If you do try to take over the world, I will have no choice but to come after you, for I am Mr. Canoehead, Canada's greatest aluminum-headed crime fighter.